Namal means sturgeon. It's been given to us by the Creator doing our creation story that we will always have the sturgeon. And the sturgeon would spawn and run all the way up until this point behind me, where is their final spot where they would spawn. Every spring we would harvest those uh, sturgeons. Between that time, the sturgeon's responsibility was a warrior, and his warrior was inside that job. His job was inside that water, and he had to take care of of our rice beds from the water side, and we took care of it from the shore side. So those sturgeons were equipped like men, also like warriors. My name is David Greeno. Uh, my Menominee name is Naukwa, and I'm the um, Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Menominee Tribe. The um, sturgeon have been with the Menominee people since creation of our tribe, thousands of years ago. It was at the Menominee River that our people were created. Five clans, bear, eagle, moose, wolf, and crane. And it was here that what the creation story had said is that Sturgeon was uh, subgrouping on, under the Bear Clan. And Sturgeon would be one of the first foods that the Menominee people harvested from the Menominee River. Well, my name is Donald J. Ryder. I'm the Fish and Wildlife Manager for the Menominee Indian Tribe. Each and every spring, the reason the tribe is where we're at today is um, at the Casino Falls, the Wolf River, we'd always have a, there'd be a calling, there'd be like a drum sound. Once that drum sound was, was heard, the lake sturgeon came in right behind that and, and um, spawned. And then that would react because Lake Sturgeon is an ancestral clan of the Menominee tribe. Someone from the Lake Sturgeon clan would start, they'd start the ceremony of spring. They're, they're directly related to our thunder beings and our thunder being stories. The sturgeons, when we harvest them, all the people would come in from all over to this location here. The sturgeon impacted the Menominee people over time as a in, in the beginning as a, uh, a subsistence, uh, a way of survival, I think I would say is, is um, and I'll go back to the earliest history that I know is when, when the Menominee people settled here in 1854, one of the reasons they decided to settle was, was of the, um, the sturgeon run. Uh, Menominees had to uh, endure long winters and, and during the springtime that the tribe, uh, tribal people was uh, depleted of their, their energy and, and, and diets. Of course, the winters were tough, so uh, the sturgeon was a welcome site, number one, for them to, to arrive at, at Kashina Falls. And that's where the Menominee people would gather to, uh, to, to gather fish to, and um, to have a big feast and to kind of re rejuvenate their, their population. It would nourish, re-nourish, I'd say, over the over the long enduring winters. Several places along the Green Bay and the Menominee River. Even through the treaty period, the Menominee relied on sturgeon even up until 1854 when the Menominee Reservation was created. One of the reasons the Menominees chose this area was the Wolf River because of the migration of sturgeon every spring that came to Kashina Falls to spawn. The U.S. government wanted us to move to Minnesota. They said the tribe was going to move. But then um, we had two of our chiefs, Chief Oshkosh and then Chief Saligny, went to, went to um, 
upper upper Minnesota look at look at some reservation land they wanted to put the Menominee tribe and it was hap happened to be at the same time there was two Chippewa tribes fighting each other so they were going to put us in the middle and <laughs> we said them <laughs> And it was on. It was and the land was no good up there either. So the the Chief Sligny and Chief Oshkosh they explained why Menominee's we as Sturgeon people why we wanted this land. And the main thing was the the main reason we wanted this was the Kashina Falls, and we that Sturgeon Drum in the spring where we get this was our land where this is where we recognize our land is when the fish would come up. So then in 1854 when we were we signed the Treaty of Casino Falls. It was to establish this reservation. But throughout history, the Menominees have relied on sturgeon not only as food and sustenance, but for medicine. And um, we still do today. Poso, uh, my name is Doug Cox. I work for the Environmental Services Department. What was happening at the time was there were some tribal members that started viewing the lake sturgeon resource as being prevented from arriving here, of reaching the reservation. Their intent was to actually go to Shawano below the dams and fish lake sturgeon um, without permit. The dam, again, and then we get back into the dam, the tribal people, okay, the, let's say the Shawano paper mill dam was built in 1880 sometime. And the tribal people didn't know what that meant. Way back, if you go back in history, Nobody really knew what that meant, so when we signed the treaty in 1854, we realized we wanted the fish. That was a, this this reservation is why we wanted Lake Surgeon. Um, and then things went on as planned. But in the 1880s, when he built the dam, the the state of Wisconsin did not consult. They didn't have a consult consultation period with the tribe. So then, with you're thinking 1880, if a dam's put up there, that blocked the fish passage. So that really had a cultural and spiritual impact on the Menominee tribal people itself. Dams, of course, uh, limit or restrict the, the uh, migration. So it, the effects a Shano Dam had on, uh, on the Menominee people in the, in the Sturgeon was it, it restricted them from, from coming to their original place of uh, spawning to Kashina Falls. So it, it, it did not allow them to get back to Kashina Falls so that the fish were no longer able to, to move, uh, migrate upstream. They were, they were limited, they just can't get by the dams. Uh, dams were built in 1892 at Shawano, below the reservation. And one thing about that, they did not ask the Manambi people um, or tell us that these dams were going to be built. They just put them there. It was a very cultural and spiritual loss to us, a loss of food sustenance, a loss of cultural identity. Um, we weren't able to conduct the uh, ceremony every spring that our ancestors had done for centuries. Um, it was a big cultural loss to us. So we got together with DNR and said, we want to know if Lake Sturgeon can make it up to the reservation and return here to Kashina Falls. And uh, the first step that the DNR took was we wanted to inform the public that that's what we were going to do. So we started a public participation effort that wasn't just on the reservation, but it was sort of Wolf River wide, Lake Winnebago wide, that's where our interests start. Research standpoint, we have a checklist of stuff we need to accomplish. And I'd say it's exciting because of all the people, it started maybe with 100 people at the ceremonial spring back in 93. And now you're growing up to be, um, it's over a thousand people that come and celebrate the whole weekend. We have weekend activities. So when we first started this, um, we're renewing our cultural existence through our historical preservation department. So I'm looking at it that way. Um, as if you look at it, one thing is it, it, it's great. Um, from a biological standpoint, I think it goes a lot to show with the um, Wisconsin DNR and Menominee Tribe and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Bureau of Indian Affairs all working cooperatively together. Um, we have we have annual meetings and we discuss different management plans or how to manage lake surgeon. Um, I think with that itself, that's going to be a 
very successful cooperative research our cooperative management partners. I, I'm seeing a positive, the, re, the relationship to the uh, Sturgeon to the Menominee people in the future I think is a, I, I see it as a positive. Um, we're working, we're working good collaboratively with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Now again though it's um, right now the relationship looks good in a, in a collaboration and the future looks good at this point. But again, however, we we have can't lose track or, or focus of of really what what is best for the fish and the people is ultimately in that is is to uh, to seek long term uh, passage and let the fish come up freely and, and spawn as they as they should. Um, truck and transport as we're doing now is moving them up is good is good. It's a ten year plan. It's working well right now again, but. But um, I, I, I can't say again, it's too early to say what the, what the future is for the Menominee people in the sturgeon, but right now it's looking uh, fairly good as, a, as a, a substitute for passage. Well, I think it's going to be good. Um, we're going to continue to work with the Wisconsin DNR to um, reestablish the um, population of adult sturgeon on the Menominee Reservation and hopefully get fish passage over the Shawano Dam and Balsam Road. I mean, there's two dams that they would have to go over. Um, we're working with the dam owner at Balsam Road, just below the reservation, to establish uh, fish passage, and also with Wisconsin DNR. Uh, hopefully someday that will occur, that so uh, migrating sturgeon can come back to the reservation naturally. Thank you. 